Hey, hi, Lisa Marie here, and happy Friday. Woo How you doing? Are you hanging in there? Has it been four weeks or six weeks for you? <coughs> Excuse me, of being secluded and staying inside. Hopefully, some of these readings have been helpful. They've been helpful for me. If anything, they're like opening my eyes to some things that I've gone, huh, yeah, that works. So here, during my lunchtime, we're going to continue reading in our 50 ways to soothe yourself without food. We are way more than halfway done. We are now on tip number 35, and it is make a bucket list. Ella. Ella says, eat Thai food in Thailand, write a steamy romance novel, live in Colorado. Learn Italian. Make up with my ex-boyfriend. So the sentences above are a few examples from my client Ella's bucket list. Hey, Carol. Ella named her list after the movie, The Bucket List. It's about two men, both terminally ill, who go on a road trip together. They create a list of activities they want to do before they kick the bucket. Since she made her list, whenever Ella has the urge to soothe herself with food, she reads it and thinks about her desires. Sometimes she adds another goal as a way to distract herself. It's fun and she easily gets caught up in daydreaming about her positive desires. Hey, Teresa. The idea of a list of things that you want to do before you die may sound a little morbid, but Creating this kind of list is a great distraction technique. It's an activity that requires only a pen, a piece of paper, a creative and active imagination, and some soul searching. The main point of making such a list is to help yourself see the big picture. If you're struggling with emotional eating, you may be fixated on the present moment, on feeling good in this instant, or on immediate gratification. You may be attached to the idea that you really want to eat this food or you won't survive. But when you start to look at what you really want from life, these extra mouthfuls of food are not going to meet your needs, nor will they bring you satisfaction for the rest of your life. A bucket list is a reminder of what is truly satisfying and what you really want from life. It's guaranteed that whatever you were planning to nibble on just a moment ago isn't going to make your top 10 list. Right? So self-soothing technique. Make a bucket list. If you feel the urge to eat, pause for a moment. Ask yourself, what do I really want from life? Then make your list. Or you might answer the following questions mentally. These topics will help you to get you started on your list. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six of them first. I want to travel to... I want to accomplish... The hobbies I want to try are the thing I've, I've never done that I'd like to try is what I would do only once would be I wish my family could guilt as comfort eating, right? That's definitely a part that puts you in this mode, right? So next, pick something from your list and start planning how to make it happen, even if you aren't ready to do it immediately. For example, if you want to take piano lessons, look through the phone book or Google for piano teachers. If you want to go scuba diving in Greece, look on the internet for organized trips. Investigate where they go and how much they cost. This will not only distract you from your thoughts about food, it will motivate you to start thinking about the steps you'll need to take to make your goals happen. 
Wow, look at that. Five minutes. We read that in five minutes. What do you think? I love this idea. I had a bucket list at one time of things that I wanted to do prior to having surgery. I made a list. I, I know where it is, but over there. I wish I would have read this first. Then I could have gone it and shared it with you. But I made a list, a shorter list I made on an index card that's actually, I know where that one is too, it's in my bathroom, of things I wanted, I, I labeled it, when I lose weight, I will, or I can. And it was just like five or six, eight things on there. And one of them was for my husband to be able to pick me up and swoop me off my feet and carry me anywhere. Another one was to go zip lining. Uh, scuba diving was another one I wanted to do. I'm trying to remember what some of the other things were. Oh, at this point back then was to bend over and tie my shoes without passing out. There's another one on there that said, um, gosh, it was stuff about being healthy. But that's the same thing that, ah, thanks Rachel, hello. That's the same thing I did on my bigger list right before I knew I was actually going to have surgery. I wrote down all of the things that I wanted to be able to do when I was healthy, when I became more active, when I made wiser food choices. And I think it's a great idea. I know in here, I mean, some of the ideas are really big, you know, that she said of, uh, I love these starter questions is where I was getting. I want to travel too. Maybe you want to travel to more than one place for different reasons and for different things. That's what's on my list. I have all kinds of places that I would like to travel. A lot of them are even here local. You would think I've gone to them in my 50 something years, uh, but I haven't. I would like to do several things that are here local and then here in the United States. There's just a lot of places that I would like to go. Of course, there's a ton around the world too. Have to admit that. Then I want to accomplish things that we want to accomplish, things we want to do. And they're not, they don't have to be big things. Like my thing, I don't know if I can show you. My big thing, well, it seems like a big thing, but it's a little thing. I wanted to organize my tea shelves. And I did. So that's something I can actually go cross off my list. Another thing was this. I wanted to clear off our kitchen table so we could actually eat at it. And I've put our fruits and vegetables in a basket and put it on there. This is what I'm using to have you on. And then there is my teapot. And there's my accomplished crocheting of my cup cozy for when I do go back to work. I see it so it could be little. It doesn't have to be a ginormous big thing to accomplish. It could be reading a book in a week or a month in my case <laughs> or in this one in a year. Whatever it is, whatever it is you want to accomplish. And of course, big things are great to put on there too. Uh, the hobbies I want to try. The hobbies I want to try, we never really know what we're going to be good at, right? Our kids, they never know what they're going to be good at. A lot of times we, as people, because we've lived through a lot of trial and errors, we build up this fear of trying new things because of failure. But it's in the moments that we fail that we learn if we look at it as an opportunity of something we learned. If we look at it as an opportunity of something we failed, then yes, we're going to avoid it at all costs. But if we look at things that we haven't done well in or we failed in as a learning experience, oh my gosh, that makes the whole thing totally different makes you want to try and do better. It makes you want to try and find a new way to accomplish it, to get it done. So if there's an activity or a hobby that you want to try that maybe you haven't done before, remember, if you were a kid and you were little and you were doing something for the first time, what are you? You're all thumbs. You're all oopses. You drop things. You're butterfingers. Huh? Even though we're an adult, 
Same thing, when we try something new, we're gonna be butterfingers, dropsy, and have all these different issues. So it's okay, it is truly okay. But why not write something like that down on your list? And then the other thing, what I would do only once would be, I'm kind of almost changing this one, but what I know for sure is on my list like that is to bungee jump. And my heart's beating just thinking of it. I'm not afraid of heights or anything like that. I'm afraid of the rope snapping. <laughs> so I'm kind of on the things there, but I think if I just did it once, get it out of my system, I would be good. And then the last thing she offers as a suggestion to start, I wish my family could. And that could be same thing. That could be big, that could be little, it could be accomplishing something together, uh, sharing time, mine. I wish my family could have a big family reunion. It would be really hard, but having that as a dream and maybe writing out the steps of what would need to happen to put that in place, that would be a distraction from putting stuff in my face. Excuse me, it would be. So there you have it. There's our 10 minutes of our 50 ways to soothe yourself. Today's was a bucket list. So get out your pen and paper or get out your phone and put it in notes because your phone is almost always with you and your notes can actually be copied and emailed to yourself, saved in Word, all these different things. But at least you can have a running list going in case you misplace your list <laughs> like I've done. So have a great day. Have an awesome weekend. The weather is turning pretty nice here, nice and warm. So I hope it's nice where you are. Hopefully you can get out and either go around your backyard or your front yard, maybe around the block, get some fresh air and um, not feel quite so isolated in this time of social distancing. Have an awesome day. And if you haven't been told lately, if you haven't looked in the mirror lately and said to yourself, self, you are loved and you're a pretty neat person. Well, let me tell you, you are loved and you're being prayed for every day, not just by me, but by him. Truly, he's our advocate. That's what he does. He's on our side. So I want you to know that you're loved and you're being prayed for and have an awesome day. Okay, talk to you later. Bye.